The next step is to take these data elements and group them together. If we look at the various data elements we have, we can actually create two classifications from these data elements. First, we can classify all the fever-like syndromes together. This includes acute fever and rash, influenza-like illness, prolonged fever, and suspected dengue. We can also create another group composed of the diarrhea syndromes, bloody and watery diarrhea. In order to create these data element groups, we'll go to data element group, and then we'll select the plus icon at the bottom. There are a couple fields associated with the data element group. We'll start with the name. The first one that we'll define is our fever syndromes. We can also give this a short name and a code if required. At the bottom, we then add the data elements that we want to be a part of this group. I'm just going to select them all. I'll hold down control and add in the data elements that I want to be part of this data element group. I'll just use this orange arrow to move them from available to selected. Once we've defined our fields and selected our data elements, we can go ahead and click on Save. Let's add in one more data element group for the diarrhea syndromes. We'll click on the plus icon, give it a name, and then select our two data elements, bloody and watery diarrhea. We'll click on save, and now we can see that I have these two data element groups. Lastly, we'll create a data element group set. We'll click on data element group set, and then click on the plus icon. We'll give it a name, which is the only mandatory field in this section. And then we can give it a code and a description if we like. We also have these fields for compulsory and data dimension, just like we did in organization units. If we select data dimension, this means that we will be able to add these different groups as data dimension selections when we perform our analysis. The compulsory field is the same as before. This indicates that all data elements must be part of the groups within this group set. We will just leave that blank for now. Let's go ahead and click on save. Let's have a quick look at how this affects our various analyses tools. Just very quickly, within the pivot table application, we can see that the different data element groups we have created are available. They group the data elements based on those data elements we have selected to appear in those groups. If you remember from the analysis, it's quite useful to have these grouped together, in particular if we have a lot of data elements within our DHIS2 system.